Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about Firebase Auth. So today's app will be pretty simple. We're just going to have two text fields, one for email address and one for password, and three buttons, one for sign up, one for sign in, and one for log out. Now we could also do form validation, error handling. This is just going to be an introduction to Firebase Auth, and then in the next video, we'll dive deeper. The first thing we're going to do is connect the iOS portion of our app to Firebase. We'll go into iOS here and right mouse click on this XC workspace. We're going to do reveal in Finder. You'll double click this to open up Xcode. We're going to double click on this very top runner. So this bundle identifier we're going to need here, you'll notice it says com.example and then it has the app name that we're using. If you have a domain name for your apps or your company, I would suggest putting it here instead. I think as long as it's unique, you're okay. But if you do have a domain or plan on getting a domain, I would suggest using it here. So I'm going to change this example here to learn Flutter with me. Then I'm going to copy that. Now under deployment info, you're going to see iOS 9. We're going to change that to at least iOS 10. Okay, we're done with Xcode for now, but minimize it because we're coming back to it. Now we're going to go into console.firebase.google.com. Once you're in there, you want to add a project. We're just going to call this Firebase Auth Example. Hit continue. We're going to skip Google Analytics since we're just doing a tutorial and then hit create project. We'll wait for the project to be created. Now that the project is created, we'll click continue. So now that we're inside here, we're going to click this iOS icon here. That bundle ID that I copied, I'm going to paste it in here. And then I'm going to skip these two optional fields here and hit register app. Now I'm going to download this Google service file. Now you'll want to make sure that there's no extra characters in this file name. For example, if you've downloaded this file before, there may be a one in parentheses in it. You want to make sure that the file name is exactly like this. We're now going to open Xcode back up, take this file and drag it and drop it under the second runner folder. We want to make sure that add to targets is checked and then hit finish. And then we're done in Xcode so you can close it. Over back at Firebase, we're going to click next. We're going to skip this and click next. We're going to skip this and click next. And we're going to continue to console. Now, one other thing you're going to want to do on the iOS side is you're going to want to make sure CocoaPods is up to date. You can do that simply by entering this command here sudo gem install CocoaPods. Okay, now that we have iOS installed, we're going to go and install on Android. So we have to update two files here. We're going to go under Android and app, and you'll see a build.gradle file here. Double click that. The ID that we're going to want for Android is right here. Again, you'll see com.example. I'm going to take this and change it to learn Flutter with me. And then I'm going to copy that. We'll go back over here to Firebase and click this add app. And now we're going to do the Android icon. Very similarly, the ID we just copied, we're going to paste in here. And we're going to skip these two fields that are optional and hit register app. We're going to download the Google services JSON file. And again, you want to make sure the file name is exactly like this. If it has any parentheses or numbers in it, you want to remove those. It needs to look exactly like this. We'll go back into VS code and we're going to copy it here into app. Now, while we're in this build.gradle file, we're going to go down here where these apply plugins are and we're going to add a line. 
And then to enable multi-dex, we're going to go into Android and default to config and add a line here. And for multi-dex, we also need to add a line into dependencies. Now we can save and close that file, but we're going to open up the build.gradle file that's in the Android folder directly. Up here in build script and dependencies, we're going to add a line. You can save that and close that file. Now we'll go back to the Firebase site. We're going to click the next button here. We're going to skip all of this and hit the next button. And then we're going to continue to console. So now you should see both iOS and Android at the top. The next step we need to do is we need to click on this authentication here. We're going to click get started. Right here where it says email password, we're going to click this pencil to edit it. And we just want to enable this top one. We're not worried about this bottom one. Go ahead and hit save. And then what we're going to do next is just click on this users down here and minimize the page because we're going to come back to this. So now we're ready to install the Firebase plugins. We're going to open up the terminal and we're going to type in flutter pub add Firebase core. After that's done, we're going to type in flutter pub add Firebase off. And once that is done, you should be able to come down here into your pub spec YAML file and you'll see those entries in here. So now let's build our tutorial boilerplate. I'm going to delete everything from here down. I'm going to change this to auth app. I'm going to do a new stateful widget by typing in STFUL and hitting tab. I'm going to do a material app. and a scaffold and an app bar. We will go ahead and run that. Okay, it's looking good so far. Let's go ahead and add our text fields and connect them to their controllers. So we're gonna create a body here. There's our two text fields. Up here at the top of auth app state, we're going to add our controllers. And then we'll connect them to these text fields. Now you could also add obscure text here if you want to. Um, I'm going to leave it off for the tutorial though, so we can see the contents of the text field. Okay, we've got our text fields there. I'm gonna add the three buttons. On this one, we're going to add a main access alignment. We're going to do space around. There we go. That's gonna be our basic layout for this tutorial. So now we're ready to start tying Firebase to the app. Up here at the top, we're going to add Firebase Core. And then we're going to add Firebase Auth. Right here in main, we're going to ensure that the widget's flutter binding is initialized. We're going to add async to this and await. And we're going to make sure that Firebase is initialized. So now we're ready to do the sign up process. So down here in the sign up button, we're going to make sure this has async and we're going to create the user with email and password. And then below this, we're going to call set state just so it'll rebuild the app for us. So 
So we'll go ahead and give it a try. We're going to type in test1 at test1.com and testing1. And then I'm going to click the sign up button here. Now you're not going to see anything happen here, but if you go back to Firebase and hit the reload button, you'll see the record there. So let's make it to where you can tell when somebody's logged in from the app. We're going to go to this build right here at the top of auth app state. And we're going to type this in. And we have the question mark here by user because this can be null if no one is logged in. So down here in the app bar, we're going to add this. And I'm going to do what's called a ternary operator or a simplified if then statement to where if user is null, it's going to say out. Otherwise it's going to say in. So this says logged out if user is null. Otherwise it says logged in. We'll save that and you'll see that the user is logged in. So we'll work on the logout button now. We'll go down here. We add async again. And we're going to again add set state here. We'll save that and come over here and click the logout button. And now, as you see, it says logged out. So one last thing to add, we'll add the process to sign in. We're going to once again add set state here. Save those changes. And now we're going to click sign in here. And now you'll see that they're logged in. So we'll do one more test. I'm going to log this person out. I'm going to change this to test2 at test2.com and testing2. I'm going to sign this person up. We'll see that they're logged in. If we go to Firebase and hit the reload button, we'll see the new user there. We will log the person out, they're logged out, and we will sign the person back in, and they're logged in. Okay, as I mentioned, this doesn't have form validation or error handling or anything like that. This was just an introduction to Firebase Auth. In the next video, we'll dive more into it. So you might also like this video here, and if you're enjoying my videos and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. Thanks, and I hope to see you in the next one.